Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for another midweek mystery. Before we get started on this week's mystery I just want to say thank you so much for the really lovely amazing response on last week's video. It was my first ever solved case that I covered, the case of Daniel Morecambe and I got such incredible feedback so thank you so much if you watched that. It's actually like done really well so I might do some more solved cases in the future but unsolved mysteries are where my heart truly lies and this week I've got another unsolved case for you. So this week's case is very interesting because somebody actually did go to jail for it and the police thought they'd solved it and the person appealed and actually got their conviction changed to not guilty. So it's a very interesting case, bear with me on this one, let me know what you think at the end and let's get into it. So this is the case of Billy Joe Jenkins, this happened in 1997 in a town called Hastings in East Sussex in England. For those of you who aren't familiar with English geography, which sure a lot of you aren't, Hastings is a town sort of south, southeast of London and it's quite near the coast, it's a coastal town. Billy Jo Jenkins was a 13 year old girl who lived in Hastings with her foster family. Um, her foster parents, Sean and Lois Jenkins, and she had four foster sisters. Now Billy Jo had lived with them since she was nine years old. Her father went to prison and her mum just couldn't look after her properly. So she was put in the foster system and was placed with the Jenkins. Billy Jo Jenkins is Billy Jo's real birth name. Um, just turns out that she happened to get placed with another family with the same surname as her. So she immediately fitted right in. Billy Jo was taken in by them when she was just nine years old in 1992 and she lived with them until she died at 13 years old in 1997. So the 15th of February 1997 started like any other day for the Jenkins household. However, things took a bad turn when Billy Jo was found dead on the patio in the garden battered to death by an 18 inch iron tent peg. That day, Billy Jo was painting the patio doors in the garden. Lois Jenkins, her foster mum, was out with two of her foster sisters, Esther and Maya, and I think they were just running errands around the town. Billy Jo was at home with her foster father, Sean, and her foster sister, Annie. Another sister, Lottie, was out at a clarinet lesson and Sean went out to pick her up. When Sean arrived home, he decides that he's gonna pop up to the local DIY store where Billy's been painting the patio door. There's sort of splatters of paint everywhere and he's gonna go get some white spirit just to clean up the mess. So Sean leaves to go to the DIY store and takes Annie and Lottie with him guess they just wanted a trip to the store. I think a common misconception with this case is Sean took his daughters out shopping. A lot of the newspaper articles about it read Sean took his daughters out shopping and when he came home he found Billy Joe dead. I think this paints a picture of his poor foster daughters at home being Cinderella painting the patio door and he's treating his biological daughters for a day out shopping. That isn't how things went down here. Sean popped a local DIY store and his two daughters wanted to come with him. He was gone for 15 minutes max. According to Annie and Charlotte, or she was known as Lottie when she was younger, they left to go to the store and they got to the store when Sean realised that he'd forgotten his money. So they turn around and head back home. Sean runs into the house, is probably in the house for about three minutes. Please bear in mind this does come from a young girl. I think, I don't know exact ages, but I think Lottie was probably around 10 years old at this time. Um, so it is coming from a child's memory. So I wouldn't take everything she says as proper truth, but she said that Sean was in the house for about three minutes and when he comes out, he has the money, they turn around and head back up to the DIY store. They're home within 15 minutes. They return home and Lottie heads into the back garden to see Billy Joe, and she finds Billy Joe lying on the floor covered in blood and she calls for her dad. Sean comes out and rushes to Billy's side. Billy is severely, severely injured. There's blood everywhere and so he calls 999 and in the 999 call, he says that Billy Joe, his daughter, has injuries to her face and to her head. And of course, paramedics are immediately sent out. Paramedics get there as quickly as they can, but sadly, by the time they arrive, Billy Joe is already dead. Sean's always said that when he arrived at Billy Joe's side, she was still breathing, she was still alive, but by the time paramedics had arrived, that she was dead. Um, so that does give like a very short time slot in which she could have been beaten, that 15 minutes. So I'm not sure with the extent of her injuries if she would have died immediately, but Sean's always stuck by his version of the story and that is that Billy Joe was alive when he was by her side. Of course, police immediately begin looking for suspects and Billy Joe's body is sent off for an autopsy. Now I'm just gonna read from my notes here um, what the autopsy said because I don't wanna get any of the details wrong. Um, the autopsy revealed that the cause of death was a blow to the head manner of death was homicide. She had nine estimated blows to the head in a sporadic random pattern, all in close proximity to each other. 
Her skull was shattered and her nose was broken. She had defensive wounds, bruising on her left and right forearms. And she also had some older bruising, estimated to be about a week old, found around her wrists and forearms as well. The internal examination revealed no evidence whatsoever of sexual assault or abuse. And her ninth and 10th right ribs were fractured, Blood was found in her lungs and in her mouth, and the autopsy said that the blood in her mouth was most likely caused by her broken nose. The weapon, like I said, was an 18 inch iron tent peg. It wasn't hidden, it was just blatantly lying there at the scene, so there wasn't a massive search for the murder weapon. And with the size and the weight of the weapon, the examiner said that it's unlikely that much force would have needed to be used to cause this amount of injury to Billy. She was a 13 year old girl, she was quite small. Um, and with the weight of the tent peg, it would have been quite easy to harm her with this. Now this next thing I've been unable to verify with sort of actual police records, but it's been mentioned in pretty much every single newspaper article I've read online about the subject. Um, so I'm going to assume that this is real. Um, a small piece of plastic, thought to be a bit of a black bin liner, was actually found stuffed up Billy's nose. And apparently it was found by a neighbour who was attending to her after she was injured. You'll see why that detail, the plastic stuffed up her nose, is relevant a bit later on. So police are looking for suspects and on the 24th of February, just nine days after Billy Joe was murdered, Sean Jenkins, her foster father, is arrested on suspicion of murder. And then he's formally charged on the 14th of March. Sean became the prime suspect when his wife, Lois Jenkins, actually came forward claiming that Sean had a history of violence and domestic abuse. She made a statement to the police about Sean's violent temper and this immediately put him to the top of the police's suspect list. In her statement, she said that Sean regularly harmed her and the girls as well, including Billy Joe. From what I read, it was just things like he kicked the girls in the shins if they weren't behaving or would punch them or would just get very violent and very angry very quickly. Sean was actually a deputy headmaster at a local secondary school and he was quite highly regarded in the community. So it was a shock to everyone when these allegations came forwards and he was arrested. But apparently the police found out that Sean lied on his CV to get this position in the first place. They'd only recently within the last couple of years moved to Hastings, particularly for this job that Sean wanted. And then the police find out that he's lied on his CV about his education. And I think in the police's eyes, this made him a liar and therefore he couldn't be trusted. And this was more reason to believe that he was the one who killed Billy Joe. A forensic examination of the scene and Sean's clothes, specifically the fleece jacket he was wearing the day of the murder, revealed 158 microscopic blood spots. According to police, this was proof that Sean had to be the one who had harmed Billy Joe, and this was the key piece of evidence in his trial that happened in April 1998. They claimed that these blood spots could only have come from Sean beating Billy Joe, and that he beat her during the three minute window he had running back into the house to get money. However, in the trial, no motive was ever established for why he would want to kill Billy Joe. Had Billy Joe done something to anger him? Was it just his violent temper coming out to play? And there was a moment of pure frustration and anger and he picked up a nearby tent peg and hit her over the head with it? I think it's a totally plausible explanation. However, the fact that it's nine solid hits to the head, that's what the autopsy said, Surely if Sean just got angry at her and he hit her once and realised what he'd done, he wouldn't continue to hit her. However, interestingly, the jury was never actually told about Sean's history of domestic violence and abuse, but they still found him guilty. On the 2nd of July, 1998, he was convicted of the murder of Billy Joe Jenkins and he was sentenced to life in prison. His wife, Lois Jenkins, fully believed that he was guilty. She never wavered in this. I think I read in an interview that she was lying next to him in bed one night and then suddenly thought, my husband is the one who killed her and then from that moment she was set in that Sean was the one who killed Billy and I just find that very strange because usually husbands and wives would stick by each other for at least a little bit of time in a case like this. However, it was actually Lois who seemed to make Sean their number one suspect. Throughout the trial, the defense actually argued that the blood spots on Sean's clothes weren't caused by him beating Billy. They were actually there because he rushed over to her side to help when he found her on the ground and she was still alive at this time. And so she was breathing out these blood particles because like I said, her lungs and her mouth were both full of blood. It could be that she had a blood bubble and it burst and that's how it got on Sean's clothing. That's what the defense's argument was. And I have to say in this case, I kind of see where they were coming from because I would assume that if it was him that beat her to death, the amount of blood that was there, I'm sure that there would be more blood on him than just microscopic particles. However, who are we to say that he didn't change clothes? 
The girls who were waiting from the car, his daughters, never said that he changed clothes and that would probably be something you would notice, I'd say. Um, but maybe they just didn't notice. Maybe he had two very similar fleece tops and he quickly changed before heading back out to the car. But in a three minute time gap, this to me, it just doesn't quite add up. Like I said, Lois Jenkins was always so convinced of her husband's guilt that in 2002, she actually moved to the other side of the world. She moved to Tasmania and took her four daughters with her. Since that day, none of them have had any contact whatsoever with Sean. Sean always maintained his innocence and his story never wavered at all. In 1999, he appealed for a retrial, which was immediately rejected. However, in 2001, his court was taken on by the Criminal Cases Review Commission. They spent two years researching his case and making sure they had solid grounds for a case for his appeal. In 2004 they referred back to the courts of appeal and Sean won the rights to an appeal and he was released on bail pending trial. And so a retrial started. The defence's main argument here was like I said the blood spots on the clothes. They had experts in who said the microscopic blood spots probably were caused by a burst blood bubble in Billy Joe's mouth. They also said that they were all very uniform in size. If Sean was the one who was beating Billy Joe then the spots will probably be uneven, there'd be some bigger, some smaller, and there'd probably be a lot more blood on him than there was. And once again, there were absolutely no motives presented for this murder. This retrial lasted three months, and the jury were actually unable to reach a verdict at the end of it. They deliberated for 36 hours and couldn't reach a majority verdict, and so a third trial was ordered. In this next trial, Charlotte, or Lottie when she was younger, took the stand and said that she was confused by her memories of that day and what had gone on. She couldn't remember what she'd said to the police, she couldn't really piece it together. She was 10 years old at the time so this is understandable. In the third and final trial I think very similar evidence was put forward and once again the jury were unable to reach a majority verdict. So in February 2006 the Old Bailey declared Sean Jenkins not guilty of the murder of Billy Joe Jenkins. So Sean has never actually technically been found not guilty by a jury. However, he was kind of released on a technicality. They couldn't do another retrial, but he wasn't guilty. So he was released. And since then he's remarried, he's studied criminology, and he has always maintained his innocence. He's declared that he wants to find out who murdered Billy and then he will never talk about it again. So that's everything that happened in this case in regards to Sean Jenkins. However, the police do have another couple of suspects that have sort of been banded around. I think if Sean is innocent here, then Lois Jenkins should probably be looked at more closely. I'm not saying I think she did the murder because I'm pretty sure she has a solid alibi for that day. She was out of the house with her daughters. But I think you do have to question why she was so quick to assume her husband's guilt. For example, does she know something that was never mentioned or was the violence at home so bad that she kind of just wanted an excuse to kind of get him out of their lives? So the police is first suspect and they actually arrested this man was a person known as Mr. B. Now Lottie Jenkins said to the police when she was questioned that the side door of the garden may have been open when they arrived. She said she couldn't remember for certain because she didn't pay attention to it fully at the time. But she had a feeling the side door was open and it shouldn't have been. The side door being open meant that anybody from the street could have access to their garden. There was a mentally ill man seen around the area at the time of Billy Joe's death. It's said that he had paranoid schizophrenia. He was seen acting strangely in a park around the time of Billy Joe's death, which I think is what got him off. He kind of had alibi because people had seen him in the area at that time. Um, but a man called Brian, who owned a guest house on the street that Billy Joe died, um, said that Mr. B rang the doorbell and Brian answered and they had a very confused conversation. I think Mr. B was looking for somewhere to stay but he had no money. So Brian told him to go into town and speak to somebody there. About two days after this, Mr. B was arrested. And do you remember when I mentioned the piece of black bin liner found earlier in Billy Joe's nose? Well, in jail, the police actually found this man, Mr. B, holding pieces of plastic bags up to his nose and he was sort of in a fetal position. It kind of looked like he was maybe smelling the plastic or like shoving up his nose. I'm not entirely sure, but the police said it was very weird and when they strip searched him, they actually found more plastic in his underwear. And it's weird that he was seen sniffing plastic and plastic was found up Billy Joe's nose, but there was no actual evidence to support the fact that Mr. B had harmed her and so he was let out. Something I do find very strange though and something that I think, if it is true, probably needs to be looked at in this case, is that apparently the murder weapon was never actually tested for DNA ever. Now I read through a lot of police files on this case and I couldn't see any reference 
to the murder weapon ever being tested for DNA and also all of the newspaper articles I've read say it wasn't but I just find how could they go to trial having never tested the murder weapon for DNA and I'm pretty sure to be honest if it was tested for DNA they would probably have found Sean Jenkins DNA on it because it was in his garden it was probably his tent peg um but maybe they would have found some other DNA on it I just find that very strange it was never tested maybe there was a reason I don't know if you know any more about that please let me know the final suspect in this case is the m25 rapist if you live in england you've probably heard of him before he was actually called anthony emilia he was a german convicted rapist who raped people sort of around the m25 corridor the m25 is a motorway that circles london and so it sort of goes all the way around and the m25 rapist would pretty much solely attack people in towns that were on this M25. Um, I think there was only one case in which it wasn't connected to the M25 at all. He would assault and rape women and girls. I say girls because his, I think his youngest victim was actually a girl aged 10. He was found guilty of the rape of nine women and the indecent assault and attempted rape of a 10 year old. He actually died very recently, about three weeks ago on the 8th of March, 2018, he died in jail. The reason that Anthony has been linked to this case is that Anthony always wore a leather jacket and Billy Jo had recently been complaining about a man stalking her. I think the first the family heard of it was around December time, December 1996, so a couple of months before she died. And I think this is a very important piece of this case. Billy Jo was being stalked. But Anthony often wore a leather jacket and Billy said that her stalker always wore a leather jacket. Other than that though, the link to this case is very, very loose. I feel like the press have been trying to make this link a lot recently. Um, but there's just nothing really there and especially the fact that Billy Joe was not sexually assaulted or raped in any way. She was just murdered and the M25 rapist always raped. He was a rapist and he never murdered anyone. I think another thing people use to try to link these cases is the fact that Billy Joe was found with a plastic bin liner up her nose and apparently the M25 rapist would put black bin liners over his victims' heads as he raped them. I think it is very important to bear in mind that Billy Joe was complaining of being stalked for many months before her death. Was it possibly her stalker? I do think that makes a lot of sense. Let's say that that day the stalker was watching Billy maybe looking over a garden fence and Sean comes out and says, oh, me and the girls are heading up to the DIY store. The stalker now knows that Billy Joe is alone in the garden and so goes through the open side gate and attacks her. I think that's definitely a very valid theory in this case, um, but we kind of don't know who the stalker is there are no suspects as to who the stalker could be i don't even think the police ever really took that seriously from what i can see so that's all i have on this case i would be so interested to hear your guys thoughts and opinions on this i found this case a roller coaster to research and read through because when i first started researching it i thought 100 percent that sean was definitely guilty the more i read the more i've sort of wavered on that and now i'm not really sure where i stand there's definitely definitely things here that could point to his guilt but there's also things that point to the fact that he's not guilty and i think we can't overlook the fact that billy joe was complaining about having a stalker the black bin liner up the nose just is a very weird part of this case to me if sean had killed her why would he put a piece of plastic bin liner up her nose unless she did it herself but then why let me know what you think i have no idea who i think did this to billy i absolutely do not know at all but i'd be so interested to hear your guys opinions make sure you give this video a thumbs up it does really help it helps push my video out to the algorithm and also lets me know if you are actually enjoying the video or not and also make sure you click that subscribe button down there because when i hit 50,000 subscribers i'm going to be doing a whole solid week five days that's not a solid week. I'm going to do Monday to Friday of mystery videos to celebrate finally hitting 50,000 subscribers. So make sure you click that button down there and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.